This is topsoil. To mankind, topsoil means food and life. It exists only upon a small favored fraction of the Earth's surface, and it averages a depth of only six inches. Your life depends upon these six vital inches. Without it, there would be no forests, no agriculture, no life on land at all. Losing this precious resource means farmland, pastures, and even forests are turning into deserts. At the current rate of depletion, natural processes cannot replace the topsoil. Generating just 3 cm of topsoil takes 1000 years, and if current rates of degradation continue, all of the world's topsoil could be gone within 60 years. There are many causes of soil degradation, but one of them stands out. Agriculture is one of the human activities with the most impact on our landscape. Many civilizations have crumbled due to droughts and land degradation. Agriculture has exploited our most precious land and other natural resources. The skyrocketing population of the world since the Industrial Revolution and increasingly destructive farming practices have put us on a course of ruin. With increasing mouths to feed and the threat of climate change, something needs to change about the way we grow our food. We need to move to regenerative agriculture, a system of farming principles and practices that rehabilitate and enhance the health of the soil. Specifically, it aims to preserve organic matter in the soil and restore degraded soil biodiversity. Regenerative agriculture not only increases the water holding capacity of the land, but also fights climate change by sequestering carbon from the atmosphere. Regenerative farming does all of this not through the use of more chemical inputs, water, or other technologies, but by imitating natural ecosystems. Ecosystems have evolved over millennia to conserve water and nutrients and support multitudes of life forms. One of the most crucial symbiotic relationships is that of plants and microbes in the soil. Fungi, specifically mycorrhizae, are especially important. They form networks that take sugars from plant roots called root exudates and in return give the plants mineralized nutrients like phosphate and iron. Effectively, they expand the reach and absorption capabilities of the roots. The benefits of this relationship extend beyond just nutrient exchange. The sugars that the plant roots exude come from photosynthesis, which takes carbon from the atmosphere and sequesters it into the soil through microbial biomass, which is stable and doesn't decompose into carbon dioxide. This is the process by which nature turns dirt into life-sustaining soil. Just a 1% increase in organic matter helps soil hold an additional 20,000 gallons more water per acre. And improved water holding capacity means crops are more resilient through times of drought or floods. Regenerative farming is gaining mainstream scientific acceptance with Dr. Ratan Lal winning the 2020 World Food Prize for developing and popularizing a soil-centric approach to farming. When the Green Revolution of the 60s was a great success, the soil-centric approach ensures long-term sustainability of agroecosystems by reconciling the need for increasing food production with the necessity of improving the environment, with a specific focus on restoration of soil health and quality of water and air. The practice of tilling is as old as agriculture itself. Tilling helps loosen the land so seedlings can establish themselves in the soil. The downside is, tilling exposes soil microbes to the sun and atmosphere, thus killing them. It also breaks up soil aggregates and destroys soil structure, while releasing large amounts of CO2 back into the atmosphere. In contrast, regenerative farming uses no-till methods to sow seeds with minimal damage to the soil and its inhabitants. A similarly destructive yet widespread practice is using inorganic fertilizers. Research from the University of Illinois titled The Myth of Nitrogen Fertilization for Soil Carbon Sequestration has shown that using synthetic nitrogen fertilizer has a negative effect on soil carbon. These synthetic fertilizers disrupt the delicate relationships between soil microbes and plants. It's clear that using synthetic fertilizers actually decreases the nutrient holding capacity of the soil, thus making it further infertile and susceptible to leaching. You will never see a monoculture in nature. Planting the same crops in the same place can lead to a concentration of certain nutrients and a lack of others. 
Different plants release different carbohydrates through their roots. This gives soil microbes a variety of carbs to feed on, which in turn provide a variety of nutrients back to the plant. Therefore, strategically rotating a variety of crops, especially nitrogen-fixing legumes or root vegetables, can infuse the soil with diverse organic matter. If you have a diversified cropping system and if you can manage the soil health, I don't think so, pest is a problem. So here, we have not used any kind of pesticide or natural pesticide, anything. So like this marigold is there, there are so many flowers which can, they can take care of the pest. Regenerative farming also requires planting cover crops instead of leaving land fallow. This goes counter to the advice that the USDA had been giving out for years till very recently. Natural ecosystems almost never have vacuums. Land left exposed to the elements deteriorates and the organic content in the soil necessary for plant growth dries out. Cover crops keep the soil intact and keep the soil microbes fed. Natural environments have evolved with the presence of ruminants like bison and buffalo. Holistic grazing is an important strategy that leverages this animal-soil relationship in order to preserve soil health. Careful management of herd movement and grazing schedules prevents land degradation from overgrazing. We have reached a point where merely halting emissions will not keep us safe. Increasing wildfires and the melting of the Arctic ice caps means that global warming will continue unless we actually take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. To stabilize our climate, we'll have to do this till we return to pre-industrial revolution levels. We need to think beyond reduction and start working on drawing down carbon dioxide. Research shows that more carbon resides in the soil than in the atmosphere and all plant life combined. It is estimated that regenerative farming could sequester between 15 and 100% of our current annual CO2 emissions. We would be cleaning up our atmosphere while saving money and increasing crop yields and therefore ensuring food security. Changing farming practices does not happen overnight. We need to transition from industrial chemical-based farming in a way that suits individual farms. However, the upside is enormous. Within just one to two years, soils can make incredible recoveries with regenerative practices. Moreover, regenerative farms have great profitability in a time when conventional farms are losing money. Very expensive seed costs. But now when you take it the full length of the year and look at the fact that that Austrian pea is actually adding 40 to 50 pounds of nitrogen, then you got to figure out, well, what's that saving me in fertilizer costs? Well, corn takes about 120 pounds per acre of nitrogen to really get it to full production and a, a full crop. So I'm cutting my fertilizer bank in half. So I'm only using half the amount of fertilizer that I normally need to use. Then suddenly Austrian pea isn't so expensive. There's a value in that, but there's another value in that is less time for me in the field, making sure fertilizer is being applied at the appropriate time because it's just there already. One study has found that corn farmers using regenerative practices made 78% more profit on average than those using conventional methods. In some countries like Australia, regenerative farms are even paid carbon credits, which range from between $50 to $100 per hectare. In addition, several US startups have set up carbon offset marketplaces that allow companies to purchase credits from farmers. I strongly believe that health of soil plants, animals, people, and ecosystems is one and indivisible. Climate change, desertification, and food security are intractable challenges facing humanity. None of these can be solved without changing agriculture. Regenerative agriculture is a step in that direction.